Hello everyone and welcome to the Adam Sharp YouTube channel. In this video, I'd like to talk about the data flow and event delegation in Flutter applications. So I have a very simple application. You can see that this is my app or this is the main dart file. And the home is set up to a customer list page, which is right over here. Now, if I want to go ahead and display a list of customers, the first scenario is that I can simply just display a list of customers right here by using a list view or some other control. But I want to do it inside a widget, meaning that I want to create a widget that will be responsible for displaying the customer because this is the actual page that I'm talking about. So I can go ahead and add a new file and I will call it customerList.dart. And now I can go ahead and create a customer list. So let's call it customer list. And inside over here, we'll make sure that we go ahead and import the material. There we go. And over here, instead of the container, I can actually use a list view dot builder item count whatever the item count is, let's say 10 for now, and item builder. We're gonna pass in the context, we're gonna pass in the index, and we're going to return a list tile with the title set to something. So in this case, I can simply set the title to hello world and display this particular customer list. Now I can go back to my customer list page and instead of the text, I can go ahead and display customer list. Now the difference between a page and a non-page or a widget is simple. A page can contain other widgets. And a customer list is a broken down, very simplistic widget that will be part of the customer list page. So this is the actual page that the user will see. And this page will consist of more widgets. Now, obviously right now it's simply displaying hello world, which is fine, I guess. But let's say that we actually have to fetch the data. Now, there are certain scenarios that you can do. You can go ahead over here in the actual constructor and you can fetch the data over here. This is what is a problem. Now, if you're trying to fetch customers inside the customer list widget, then that's gonna be an issue. Now, the reason it's going to be an issue is that your customer list is now very tightly coupled with the data that you're fetching. So if I had something like this over here, like a list of string, and we'll just call it customers. And if I go ahead over here and initialize it, so if I go over here and say, let's say that we get the data somehow, and then we are initializing the list to something. So initialize it to a list of string, and now we can go ahead and say add, let's say John and so on, like different people, we can add it to the list. Obviously we're not really fetching this information from any web service or anything like that, but we are assuming that we are just fetching this information from somewhere. So this information, this is wrong if you are doing this. And once again, you are using the customer list widget and you are fetching the data from over here, most probably using a web service, using a web service, and then you are getting the data into the customer's array. So now anytime the customer list page is going to use the customer list, the customer list is always going to make this web service call and populate this customer's array and then display it, which will work just fine, but it is a very, very, kind of like a brittle kind of a solution. And the reason it is a brittle solution or it's not really flexible is that other people or other pages cannot use customer list if they want to display a different set of customers. So how can we accommodate that? Well, we can accommodate that by creating this into a list. And when you have to create a customer list widget, then you have to pass in there. So somebody is going to be passing in this particular list. Now let's go ahead and implement that also. Customers.length, that's fine. And we will go ahead and say over here, this dot customers and index. Now, although it looks like a small change, but it is not, it's a big change. Now the customer list 
if you want to display the customers, the parent, which in this case is a customer list page, has to pass in some information to that. So this means I can go ahead and create a list of customers over here. Let's say whatever, Mary and whatever, Alex and John. And now I can go ahead and pass this customers to the customer list. And the customers list is only interested in displaying this information and that is it and nothing more. So always remember when you are building your Flutter applications, the data should be flowing from the parent to the child. This means that in this case, the customer list page is a parent and the customer list widget or the customer list is a child. So that's why the data is gathered, is requested from the actual page. You might be using a MVVM model you might be doing some other scenarios, other design patterns. Obviously, do not make a web service call right from the customer list page. Uh, use MVVM or model view view models to do that. But the whole point is that the customer list page is going to get the data somehow and then simply feed the data to the child's, which is customer list. Now I can use customer list in a many uh, different pages and simply pass in a list of customers and I'll be done with it. All right, so that's the first thing. The data flow in the Flutter apps should always be from parent to child. Now, obviously, there are scenarios where the data is shared. That is called the global scope, which is a different discussion. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the event delegation. The event delegation basically means what happens if I select one of these customers? What should I do? Maybe I want to go to a different page or do something. Where would that code be? Now, in a lot of scenarios, what I have seen is that you go to the customer list and you simply attach an on tap event on the list tile, which is fine. And you perform the navigation or whatever you want to do right over here. So you basically say navigator dot push and all that stuff. So push uh, a material route or a material page route and all that stuff. And then in the material page route, you go ahead and set the builder and the builder is going to pass in the contacts, which is going to return you a text and so on. Something similar to that part, right? Now, this is a problem. Obviously, I haven't really written it correctly, but you get the idea that we take in, we when we click on the on tab on the list tile, we are again performing the navigation right inside the customer list widget. This means that anytime you are going to be using the customer list widget anywhere, it's always going to go to this particular route. And maybe you don't want it to go to that route. Maybe you want it to go to some different route. This means that all of this should happen in the parent. So let's go ahead and remove all of this stuff. And what we are going to do is we are going to expose a function, a callback function, and we will call it on selected. Now, in this case, we have declared a function which doesn't really take in anything, but you can actually update this so that it can take in a string. Maybe we want to pass in the selected customer. And let's go ahead and update our customer list initializer so that we can pass in the on selected also. This dot on selected, perfect. So now when anyone taps on the list tile, we can actually go ahead and get the customer that is selected. So we can actually go ahead and say customer equals to this, this dot customers and passing in the index. We get the selected customer and then we can go ahead and call on selected passing in the customer that we wanted to pass. There we go. Now, how will it look like on the customer list page? So, so what we have done over here is that we have delegated the on selected or the actual on tab to someone else. So let's go to the customer list page. And now if I have to use this, it's going to be super easy to use. I will simply go over here and say on selected. And this time I'm going to get the actual customer that was selected and I can go ahead and perform a navigation or I can do whatever I want over here. So this makes your application a little bit more flexible because a parent can decide what to do when I select an element from the child. The child is not deciding what to do, the parent is. This means that if I have to use the customer list widget, 
in a completely separate page, I can decide that maybe I don't want to do navigation. Maybe I want to send an email or I want to do something else. So basically what we have done is that we have transferred the event, the handling of the event, instead of handling it inside the child, we are now handling it on the parent. So this makes the parent way more flexible and this makes our widgets very flexible because they are not tightly coupled with performing one single action. They are simply saying, well, I don't know what to do. Hey, parent, you can just go ahead and use this. So these are the two couple of things that we have discussed. The data flow, which is always from parent to child, and the event delegation, which means that the event should be handled by the parent also. All right. Now, all of this will be part of my upcoming course on Flutter. I'm currently still in the process of making that Udemy video course. But meanwhile, if you do want to check out my other courses, then check out the YouTube description and you will find a lot of different courses that are available on Udemy, including Swift UI, Combined, Blockchain, AI, Augmented Reality, ARKit, Node.js, and so much more. So go ahead and check it out. And thank you so much for watching.